This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. But here now the news for November 1st, 2023. And yes, it's still Halloween on our set. Maybe on Thursday on News Tonight we'll figure out how to take this all down. The Walt Disney World monorail uh, that got stuck between the Transportation and Ticket Center in Epcot uh, broke down due to a flat tire, Disney said in a statement. Fox 35 Orlando first reported that the monorail was stuck at 9.50 a.m. on Halloween. Passenger Chris Link uh, shared photos and video from aboard the monorail and after he was evacuated. Guests were still being evacuated over an hour later. Link told Fox 35 Orlando, uh, there was a loud bang explosion and then we kind of saw a big flash of light. After that, the monorail slowed down. He also said he smelled burning rubber and a little bit of smoke. The explosion sound, the smell, and smoke are explained by the sudden flat tire. According to Disney, no guests or cast members have reported injuries due to the incident. Yet another Carousel of Progress audio animatronic lost its hand mid-show at the Magic Kingdom this week. You may remember John, the father of the Progress family, previously lost his hand in February of 2020 and again in August of 2023. But now Grandpa went handless during the Christmas finale scene. TikTok user Anyway It's Amy shared a video of the grandpa's hand on the ground next to him among the presents below the Christmas tree. Amy wrote in the video that grandpa really wanted to lend a hand to Christmas and added in the caption that they were evacuated from the attraction possibly because of the hand. Uh, the scene was updated last summer with the animatronics getting new hair and outfits while the dialogue remained the same. And obviously, I guess the hands did too. Uh, because they're still having all sorts of problems at the Carousel of Progress. Well, Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World maintenance is just not, it's not good these days. Asha from Wish has arrived for her meet and greet at Epcot. Wednesday morning, the Asha meet and greet was added to the My Disney Experience app with times beginning at 9.30 a.m. You can find her uh, at the gazebo near the front of World Showcase. It's been decorated with purple and gold banners for the Kingdom of Roses, where Asha, where Asha lives. Uh, a faux stone uh, wall is the backdrop of the meet and greet with large posts of plants on the ground and lanterns hanging from the ceiling. The banners feature a red rose design at the top alluding to the kingdom's name, and the stone wall also features white versions of the rose symbol. The sign outside the gazebo states Asha will appear intermittently uh, between 9.30 a.m. and 4.15 p.m. Times posted in the app are 9.30, 10.45, 11.55, 1.50, 1 and 3. Asha appears in her purple dress with her hair in braids. You can watch the video of the Asha meet and greet right here on our channel. Construction has begun on the 2023 Gingerbread House at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. They wasted no time. The Gingerbread House has been a tradition at the resort since 1999. Every year, the Gingerbread House at the Grand Floridian resembles a Victorian-style house and is located in the main lobby of the resort. Guests will be able to purchase gingerbread treats and other sweets from, from the Gingerbread House when it opens in November. Cast members were beginning to install gingerbread shingles on the side of the house uh, as well. It wasn't just the actual structure that went up. The exact opening date and times of the Gingerbread House have not yet been announced, but usually open sometime in the first or second week of November. We'll let you know as soon as we know. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. The cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground have started to be removed to make way for the new Disney Vacation Club cabins that are coming next year. Walt Disney World and Disney Vacation Club announced the proposed plans to refresh the cabins earlier this year, with more than 350 new cabins to replace those existing at the resort. While visiting Fort Wilderness for the Halloween golf cart parade, and also we happen to be staying in this loop, uh, we saw that two of the cabins were already completely cleared out from their spots at the campground. Uh, you're seeing photos now of those former cabin locations. Uh, here only the driveway and a nearby trash can remain. The two missing cabins were spotted in the 2200 loop of the campgrounds on Arrowhead Way. Uh, these new Disney Vacation Club cabins are projected to open next year and will be the 17th DVC resort once the update is complete. Speaking of Halloween at the Fort, the annual golf cart parade took place on Monday. 
a day before Halloween, actually. For this event, guests rent golf carts and decorate them with their own Halloween costumes. That being said, some people bring their own golf carts and have way more time to work on this than uh, those of us who rent. But nonetheless, uh, some of these golf carts are inspired by Disney rides, Disney attractions, Disney movies, and just anything else, pretty much. The parade took place at 4.30 p.m. on October 30th. We have a full video you can watch right here on our channel. You can even see our uh, extraterrestrial alien encounter-inspired golf cart that, that uh, Lucas, mostly Lucas, built. We, we maybe helped him strap it down, but Lucas did all the work. Thank you, Lucas. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Now it's sitting outside the cabin, and uh, we're going to have to find a home for the alien somewhere in the studio. Maybe I'll sit with Jake in the booth. I don't know. Jake, you got room for an alien? Disney's Wilderness Lodge has two more items inspired by the resort's totem pole featuring Mickey, Goofy, Donald, and Humphrey the Bear. Both can be found with the other items we recently posted about at the Wilderness Lodge Mercantile off of the resort's lobby. The totem pole magnet is $16.99. It's a fully sculpted magnet of the totem pole. It's pretty big. And the totem pole salt and pepper shakers are $29.99. They're ceramic. They're very, very cute. Uh, both available now. I, of course, bought both. I think I've bought almost every item in this merchandise line. Um, but Wilderness Lodge, one of my favorites. So uh, I can't stop. I also, when are we getting the Humphrey the Bear plush for Wilderness Lodge? I ask this every time. Someone at Disney has to be watching this. Please give us the Humphrey the Bear Wilderness Lodge exclusive plush. We need it. Make it happen. Amid menu updates, Disney quietly removed the signature cheesy barbecue brisket from the Geyser Point Bar and Grill menu at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. We noticed the, the missing dish during our visit to the restaurant this week. Geyser Point Bar and Grill first opened in 2017, and the cheesy barbecue brisket was the highlight with its side made of house-made chips. Um, it's a reason many people go. Other, I mean, there's also other good food and drinks, but this was really the, the, the signature item, I would say. Disney announced in early October that new dishes were coming to Geyser Point, Three Bridges, and as well Banana Cabana. Disney made a point to say that Geyser Point's iconic bison burger would still be available, so don't worry. Um, but they didn't mention the barbecue brisket, and we, I guess, uh, stupidly uh, thought, well, they can't possibly remove that from the menu. Well, they, they did. Um, there are still many new dishes there. Crispy Peking ribs, Thai chili, and sriracha buffalo wings. Um, in addition to the teriyaki, there's a charcuterie, charcuterie flatbread, a new turkey BLT sandwich, macaroni and cheese bites. They're vegan. A vegetable burger with quote-unquote cheese and a multigrain salad with tofu. Um, we will be going to do a review. Things have been so busy. Um, we haven't been able to go yet, but I know uh, we're going to gather Nick and some of the gang up and um, go check out all these new items and see if maybe... You know, maybe it's okay the brisket's gone. Maybe the rest of this new menu is good. We'll, we'll go find out. Stefan Mikes, known for his sitar performances at Disney's Animal Kingdom, has sadly passed away, his wife shared on Facebook. On October 22nd, Bonnie Petticord Mikes posted photos of uh, Stefan playing the sitar, writing, My husband, uh, 1954 to 2023, has left this world. My sadness knows no boundaries. This is how I want to remember him. Mike suffered uh, a medical emergency requiring a quintuple bypass surgery earlier this year, and his family created a GoFundMe fundraiser at the time to cover medical expenses and lost income. It seems his passing was related to the medical emergency, although his wife did not share details. Bonnie also shared a video clip of her husband performing Five Gates, a piece from his unfinished album. Mike performed as Chakranati in the Anandapur village of Disney's Animal Kingdom. On the Walt Disney World website, Chakranati performances were described as a mesmerizing, as mesmerizing tunes that would make guests feel as if you're transported to a new place through the sound of charming Indian instruments. I know he will be missed. It was a, one of the most memorable musical acts, I think, in, in perhaps the history of the Disney parks. The Kanan Jarrus Legacy lightsaber hilt is now available at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disney's Hollywood Studios. The hilt was first teased in the summer of 2022 after a vote by Star Wars fans. The hilt was put on display at Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities at the studios in Disneyland this October, and then the Star Wars X account finally announced it would be released on November 1st. Kanan Jarrus' lightsaber is $169.99. The hilt is made of silver metal with a black grip covering one side and a thin black stripe on the opposite. It has a brown rectangular button, and there's a circular guard before the emitter. The emitter has a longer piece extended over the blade on one side and a signature element of Kanan's hilt, and the hilt will light up a blue blade. Uh, lightsaber blades are sold separately, of course, for $50 to $55, depending on the length. The Kanan Jarrus Legacy Lightsaber Hilt should also be available at Disneyland 
today as well and on Shop Disney later this fall. Disneyland Resort has announced that Magic Key holders will be able to visit the new Adventureland Treehouse a day before anyone else with a preview on Thursday, November 9th. The preview will be from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Magic Key holders can check in along the Rivers of America across from the Golden Horseshoe. Their cast members will verify their Magic Key pass and give them a wristband for the preview. There is only one entry allowed per each valid Magic Key holder. The Adventureland Treehouse, inspired by Walt Disney Swiss Family Robinson, will open to all guests on Friday, November 10th, 2023. After we shared the rumor on Sunday, a quick note, Disneyland Resort has now confirmed that the Tale of the Lion King will permanently close after its final performances on January 7th of 2024. That is, of course, the current show at the Fantasyland Theater at Disneyland Park. Again, uh, they have now confirmed January 7th will be the end of the show. To celebrate Halloween, Walt Disney Imagineering shared a ghoulish new portrait of the captain, one of the happy haunts sailing on the new Disney treasure in the Haunted Mansion Parlor Bar. Uh, Disney revealed the ship will have that bar last week, but of course WWNT reported it back in July. In an Instagram post, Imagineering shared an animated portrait of the captain, the new member of the deep history and lore of the mansion. The captain has already been announced in name and in uh, the revealed information about the upcoming bar. Um, but nonetheless, we're learning a little bit more about him, at least through portrait. Uh, the animation on the post shows the portrait being lit by lightning flashes and true to the spirit of the iconic ride in which the bar is based. The portrait shows a ghastly view of the captain in each lightning flash as he gets more and more decrepit and eventually turns uh, into a skeleton, very much like the Master Gracie portrait on the attraction. And the treasure uh, will, will take sail in December of 2024. We will be there, of course. The partner statue has been removed from the Walt Disney Studios Park at Disneyland Paris during the ongoing construction outside of Studio One. Construction walls went up in early October, blocking the view of the partner statue. But crews have moved construction walls away from the Studio One exit now, and DLP reports shared photos of the place where the statue used to be. There is now just a large patch of black concrete where the statue once was, and a surrounding planter used to be as well. We previously shared the concept rendering you're looking at now, which shows the future new position of the partner statue, uh, which will be facing the park instead of Studio One. You can compare the photo and the rendering to the photo you're looking at now of the partner statue from 2014. That's where it was before. Construction walls are now up instead around the Animagique Theater only. Studio One, of course, is a building that acts as the park's main street. Disney on Paris has filed a permit in March for construction at the enclosed indoor space. Exterior work will reportedly last until at least April of 2024, at which point Studio One will close for interior construction and will reopen sometime around April 25th of 2025 as the expansion and reimagining of the Walt Disney Studios in Paris continues. In time for Valentine's Day, the new limited time Disney Pal Palooza Minis Funderland event will begin at Tokyo Disneyland on January 10th, 2024. Tokyo Disneyland will be transformed into Minis Funderland, a fantasy world filled with the things she dreams and loves. The event will last through March 19th of 2024, and offerings will include a parade, decorations, special merchandise, and food. The parade will follow the parade route and loop around the castle forecourt. It'll be performed once a day and last about 35 minutes. Minnie and her friends will appear on a glittering float with a large ribbon, wearing cute polka dot costumes with heart accessories. Concept renderings of Minnie's Funderland decorations include a mini flower bed at the park entrance, which has been done before, a giant pink polka dot bow in World Bazaar, and a pink carpet leading to Cinderella Castle. There will also be various banners. There will be a Minnie's Funderland merchandise collection, including stationery, plush bags, ears, and candy. And of course, the merchandise all features polka dots and the color pink. Plaza Pavilion Restaurant will have a few mini-inspired offerings starting on December 26th, 2023. They're starting very early. And from January 19th through April 7th, guests staying at the Disney Ambassador Hotel will be able to stay in rooms decorated specially for Minnie's Funderland. There will also be a special menu at the hotel, including mini-inspired treats beginning on January 9th. Meanwhile, the Disney Resort Line Monorail will have tickets and medallions featuring Disney Pal Palooza Minnie's Funderland designs beginning on January 9th as well. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at Patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, early access to the WDWNT podcast, and even the opportunity to watch them filmed live. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make this show happen every week. 
For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Now on WWNT-TV, it's Boxed In. Boxed In is a casually chaotic show featuring WWNT personalities, Eric Morton and Jill Divendahl, unboxing Disney merchandise and viewer packages, along with a few friends and a bossy little Pomeranian. So smash that like button, subscribe and comment, and keep up with the new Disney merchandise releases, seasonal releases, festival merchandise, limited edition merchandise, wishables, pins, and more. Join us Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern on WWNT-TV.